Hi, I'm Lou and welcome to this explanation on Sphinx, Cobra and Upward Facing Dog. They're all a back bending posture, depending your degree of flexibility and mobility through the spine, the degree of which posture you're coming into. They tone the nerves of the spinal column, allowing more mobility and flexibility. Those with hernia, those that are pregnant, um, stomach issues, maybe peptic ulcer, neck shoulder issues, lower back issues, being careful with this pose and perhaps checking with medical advice before you were to do this posture. But as I said, the flexibility of the spine will denote how high you come through the postures, whether you start in a beginner, perhaps in sphinx, if you're quite stiff in the back, there's no ability for arching. Um, then we come high to the cobra and then to upward facing dog. So let's begin. When you're ready, you're going to come down onto the yoga mat and you're laying onto the abdominal wall. So of course, that's why in pregnancy we're not, we wouldn't be doing this posture. We're going to take the legs out long. Feet pressing down onto the yoga mat, feet hip distance. If you let the legs relax and then activate them by pressing feet down, you should feel the kneecaps pull up, the front thighs activate. And in our first position sphinx, we're on the forearms. So we'd like to have the elbows underneath the shoulders or a little in front. Now if this causes discomfort for your lower back immediately, you would take the arms out longer, further away. Depending where that mobility of curvature is for you, you could start out long. Hands dragging back, chest projects long. So if it's easy, we then come back in to where we might be able to have shoulders, elbows balanced. And then again, we're activating the posture. So we're not just hanging off our shoulder joints. We press our hands, our arms, and we draw them back towards us if we're pulling back towards the hips. The chest will project long. If that's too much curve and the lower ribs are really flaring, draw the front lowest rib up into the back a little bit. So we're minimizing that curve. Tuck the tailbone under a little bit, lengthening the lower back. Rather than legs being soft, legs active and pressing, not out wide, but again in line with the front of the hips. So this is our curvature in our sphinx pose. Again, head neutral, not crunching on the back of the neck, not hanging the head, but maintaining the curvature line from the rest of the spine, from tailbone all the way up, lengthening through into the curve. Now, if you feel discomfort, pain, aggravation in the back, you would start to let the arms walk forward, slide away, whichever way they go comfortably for you, and then let the hands come in next to the chest, Press up onto the knees and take the buttocks all the way back to the heels in extended child. So the lower back is being elongated in this counter pose. You can take a few moments here, especially if you're not used to doing this posture, you may already have aggravation. The back might not be mobile enough, it starts to grab and become stiff. The other thing to think about when you're going through these curves is that you're not in a pivot point of the back. So instead of the back being a nice curve, which we're trying to achieve, the back will pivot if there's a weakness in one of those vertebra spots. So then that point just keeps getting more and more mobilized or weakened, and those vertebra above and below stay stiff or tight. So we want to try and maintain a nice curvature. Again, if you've got a mirror at home or somewhere that you can see, a reflection to check it out, see what that looks like, but inside, what's the feeling as well? All right, so we're lengthening out the lower back in this resting pose of child. We're gonna come back forward into that sphinx position, back onto the forearms. Switch on, so tops of feet press, legs engage, glutes activate. We're finding the curve that feels right for us. Again, maybe longer if you need. Maybe lower ribs up a little bit, maybe tailbone tucked a little more. So then transitioning to cobra. If you have the core strength, you can simply put a hand in beside, under the chest, or beside, next to the shoulder, under the shoulder, second hand, and lift a little higher. So this may already start discomfort in the back. So again, where is it for you? You may prefer to be lower, hands working down further in front. So, cobra, hands in next to the chest, 
We don't want the elbows winging out wide. We want the elbows back in behind us. Shoulder blades down into the back. Again, active legs, active glutes by pressing down. We don't want the belly to be pushing into the mat. In all our back bends, we're not forcing pressure downwards of the belly. We're gently holding, lifting it up. So if you place your hands gently next to the chest, switch on the core, the legs, the glutes, and then start to lift your body without the hands and feel you'll feel abdominal wall strengthening and activating. Then use the hands and use the arms to come up that little bit further to where it is for you. Again, lowest rib might need to come back. In and up, tailbone might need to tuck a little bit more and feel where the opening comes through for you. If legs are sore, that are soft, there is a tendency that you will drop and compress in the lumbar spine. So we activate the legs, the glutes, the lower half of the body. So a snake, a cobra, when it comes up, it rears up, it's up on its tail, that's active, ready to strike. So for you, coming up, active, ready to hold the pose, not collapse, shoulders not around ears, but down in the back, weighted, supported. Weighting hands evenly. If the elbows go wide, we have a tendency that the shoulder comes forward, impacting shoulder capsule, rather than the shoulder blade holding us. Also, elbows wide have a tendency for the wrist to fall away. We want to balance the wrist, protecting. Alignments back in line as much as we can. For those of you familiar with up dog from your cobra, simply engaging and lifting higher if you have the mobility. Pressing down, lifting up, and we lift up legs active, glutes active, inner thighs active, arms really strong, chest projecting forward. We can take the drishti up, forward or down. Wherever your neck is comfortable, again, not jamming on the back of the neck. A couple more breaths. And when you're ready, simply come up onto the knees, Take the buttocks back to the heels, and we're resting in child pose. So it's a counter pull, lengthening our lumbar spine, our lower back, forehead resting. So stacked hands for the degree that you need to rest the forehead, buttocks to heels, arms beside the feet if it's easy. And really just let this lower back lengthen, lumbar spine lengthening. Knees in close, so there's this more rounded feeling through the back, counterposing the Sphinx, Cobra, or upward facing dog. And then slow, steady breaths, in and out through your body. Exhaling, place the hands beside the knees if you need support. Press your shins down through the mat. Exhale fully. Inhale, we roll the back up, vertebra by vertebra. Chin tucking in all the way. The head will come up last. Let the belly be soft and slow, deep breaths in and out. soft. Keep the breath slow and deep. Now if you feel any discomfort in the lower back here, come back down into child pose or into another forward bend. If we come to a standing forward bend, coming up off the legs, holding into a forward fold and hanging down forward bend. Bend the legs, ribs on thigh. Easing out of that when you're ready, or you may need to do a little bit of abdominal core work, strengthening the core of the body to help also support that lower back. So in yoga sequence, usually that Sphinx Cobra Up Dog is done in a sun salute, and it's followed by a downward facing dog or a forward bend posture. So please do counter poses and balancing the curvatures of the spine. Keep practicing the poses when you feel comfortable to do so. Remember not forcing the body, but being gentle and feeling the mobility. Feel when it's ready to open and allowing you to go higher rather than trying to aggressively force yourself into it. 
So a moment again, just tuning in, feeling your lower back, being aware of it, breathing consciously. Inhale, let the arms sweep wide and up. Touch the hands together and bring them to the forehead. As we move through life, we move through life with thoughtfulness. Touch the hands to the left. As we move through life, we have kind words. And bring the hands to the heart. As we move through life, we have compassion. And we have kindness. Namaste.